right, it is 21 minutes after 7 o'clock, and it is 21 days into December. How about that? Yeah. December 21st, 2015, Woo! the Monday of Christmas week, 52 degrees here at the studios of The Source, WOCA, broadcasting live from the Paddock Mall, just outside the WOCA commissary, where you, too, can get a bite to eat. Yeah. Forecast looks pretty good. 10% chance of rain. High is 81 today. Lows 65 tonight. And that's pretty much the same all the way through, even on Christmas Day. It looks like it's going to be uh, highs in the mid to upper 80s on Christmas Day, Friday. Nice. So no, the cold temperatures that you're wearing your sweaters for and your coats for, mm-hmm. yeah, you don't need them. No, but they'll still be worn by the still ladies. Be, still be worn. Still be worn, yep. yeah. Yep. So, uh, let's say you had a good weekend. Um, I'll tell you about that in just a little bit. First, let me tell you what we're doing this morning. Well, 7.35, we'll talk about the news. You got uh, that horrible story out of Las Vegas, the hit and run that looks intentional. Oh, um, yeah. And, of course, the Star Wars, which is on the lighter side of things. <laughs> the lighter side. <laughs> And then there's political news, you have the Democrat mm-hmm. debates and the, the Trump thing and everything. So uh, we'll do all of that news and commentary stuff between 7.35 and 8. 8.35 is when we simply read the news without commentary. We call it News Bites because not only do we not offer commentary, but we shorten it. Uh, Bern Pereso will be here at 9.05. You know, Bern is from um, the Philippines. Yes, she is. And you know, the new Miss Universe is from the Philippines. Really? Yeah. Did you see this story? No, I did not. I just knew it was broadcast. Oh, it was an uncomfortable moment for um, Steve Harvey. Oh, why was that? He he announced that the runner-up was the winner. Oh, and gee. she went out there, God, smiling, <gasps> tears coming out of her eyes. Got a crown on her head, a bouquet of flowers no. in her arm. Yeah, and then Steve Harvey comes. Uh, oh, got to tell you something. I made a mistake. Oh here. no. Yeah, I had had to tell him, and says, oh. uh, it wasn't Miss Columbia. It was she's the first runner up. It's really, it's really Miss Philippines and Miss Philippines. Is, Whoa! Wow. <laughs> yeah. Miss so Columbia was still crying then for her because she was, lost. She's like, what? 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 Yeah. <laughs> Oh my! Well, did he show the people the scorecard? Just to make he sure? held it up. He said, "Look, it's all written right here. I take full responsibility. I didn't make the mistake." Oh. They're all pretty girls. Gee. I don't know yeah. why, why they have to make it seem like one is prettier than the other? Well, the girls want that. That's the girls there's, doing. There's no. They're really. It's the there's, gr- there's no they, way they you can convince me that any pretty person is prettier than anybody mm-hmm. else. Yeah. That's right. But no, the girls uh, want that. They thrive for that all their life. They're in beauty pageants <laughs> locally all the way to Miss Universe. But and they're putting that on themselves. Nobody's forcing them to do it. Bern Pareso <laughs> is a beautiful lady. And she's also from the Philippines. So there's, so there's, yes, there's my is. connection with Bern. Uh, <laughs> Joe Minoso is coming on at 920. He's an actor who stars as Joe Cruz on NBC's hit television show Chicago Fire. He's also in the movie The Man of Steel. Mm-hmm. Superman. Superman. Remember, right? yep, he appears Superman. in the TV show Prison Break and Boss. He's coming to talk to us about the Shriners Hospital's Be Burn Aware public service campaign keeping families safe from fire this holiday season. Burn followed by burn. That's right. That's right. Uh, Bill Hyde at 935. Bill is the producer and founder of the Heirloom Audio Company, and we've had some of his productions on our uh, radio station before. They are so good at what they do. Uh, so they've got a new audio book. Um, it is called The Dragon Raven? The Dragon and the Dragon Raven. Dragon and the Raven. The Dragon and the Raven. The Extraordinary Adventures of G.A. Henty. So we'll be talking about that. Um, and in the cast, let's see, from The Lord of the Rings and Indiana Jones, John Rice Davies, mm-hmm. uh, Helen George from Call the Midwife, Brian Blessed from Star Wars, The Phantom Menace, Tarzan and King Lear. Cool. He's got some famous people on this. It's all audio, of course. Yes. Sylvester McCoy from Doctor Who number seven. and He the is Doctor Who number seven. Thank you. That is cool. And John Bell from The Hobbit, plus Catherine Kelgren, an award-winning narrator. So that's the lineup for the cast. And uh, what do we have? Two to give away when when he comes on. Uh, yep. Two to give away. Okay. Uh, so we'll be doing that. 
Matt Gibbs will be here at 10.05. He's our mechanic, and he answers our automobile questions, and he is also the guy who sold me my newest vehicle that I'm driving. Yeah, and he fixes my car and my mom's, and yep. boy, he does a great job. Auto repair with They're personal wonderful. care, so if you have questions about your car, maybe you bought a, a gadget for your car, and you want to know how to you know, hook it up, he'll, he'll be the guy to ask. He fixes windows and doors and everything. <laughs> He's, well, he does everything. Kara Platoni is coming on at 1035. Kara is an award-winning journalist. She teaches reporting and narrative writing at UC uh, University of California, Berkeley's Graduate School of Journalism. Her book is called We Have the Technology, How Biohackers, Foodies, Physicians, and Scientists Are Transforming Human Perception One Sense at a Time. I love how foodies are in there. <laughs> I'm not sure what I mean. Food is everywhere. <laughs> Christoph Weber is a certified arborist in this tree time of year. By the way, today's the first day of winter, isn't it? Yes, I think or so. later on. Um... Uh, Christoph Weber, a certified arborist, a firefighter for the U.S. Forest Service. And uh, anyway, he's written a book, a short story rather, called Mobius. And it was the winning story in the science fiction competition that we've been talking about lately. Mm -hmm. uh, he'll be on to talk about that. Fun with Joe. We're continuing our 10 days of Christmas game. Let's nice. see. On Friday... We were down to, uh, let's see, we did, we did seven of the nine ladies dancing. Yes. So we'll do two more ladies dancing. Plus cool. we'll, do, we'll do the eight maids of milking. We'll do the seven <laughs> swans of swimming. We'll do the six geese of laying. We'll see how far we get and see, yeah. if, see if we can get done with that today. I doubt <laughs> it. We'll probably have to have a, another day on that one. And then when Galen, you know this on the phone. You know what they're saying. You got to be uh, ni no, nice. You can't be naughty. Yeah. You can't be naughty right now. No, you got to no. be nice. That's right. Okay, so um, I, I found online this article, which I thought was kind of fun, and we could uh, join in on it. Um, adults who recall their childhood punishments when they were naughty. Ooh, adults cool. Adults recalling their childhood punishments for when they were naughty. What did mommy make you do? <laughs> oh, mommy made me do... Do you have any? Do you have anything come to mind? No, don't tell me yet. Okay, I wait, won't. Wait till, I won't we're, tell on with, wait till okay. we're on with Galen. Galen, okay. Okay, mm, okay, okay I won't tell you yet. Your mother might be listening. Yeah. She might call up and say, I never did that. <laughs> I never did that to you. <laughs> no, Speak, I agree, folks. Speaking of, yes, you do, and uh, did. Uh, you, well, your father folks. passed, and uh, your stepfather passed, but your mom is still here. Yeah, And And speaking God. of uh, your mom, um, she was part of a wonderful thing at your church this Saturday that you invited me to be part of, which was cool. Mm -hmm. And uh, I really wanted to say something about it because I think it was a wonderful thing. You have this program at your church where you guys get together and you find out who's incarcerated in our community that has children that might not get gifts for Christmas because their parents are in jail. Right. One or both parents are in jail. Right. And so then you figure out who they are what these children might like for Christmas. They're specifically asked, and then you guys go out and buy the gifts, gift wrap them, yep. throw a big party for them. Yep. And um, it was something to see. And then, and then what they have to do is they have to come into the church, hear a little bit of the Christmas story, which I thought was awesome. Yep, at the, in the church. Uh -huh. uh, and it was a young, mm -hmm. uh, well, she wasn't a young lady, but she was a, a, lovely, Elaine. a lovely lady. Elaine Ramp. And she was she was telling the Christmas story, and then after they hear the Christmas story, they had to go into the uh, what do you call that other building? Grace Place, the Grace Place building, and get their gifts. and uh, And I'll tell you about it when we come back. It was outstanding. We'll be right back. Fox News Radio. I'm Carmen Roberts. Lots of questions this morning in Las Vegas, where a woman plowed into crowds on the sidewalk killing one and injuring dozens. We don't know the exact reasons why she did it, but we're, we're trying to determine that now. Police Lieutenant Dan McGrath. Based on her movements in the vehicle, it appears to be an intentional act. The driver's in custody being tested for drugs or alcohol. The hit and run happened Sunday night on the Las Vegas Strip. Enrique Marquez, the only person charged with the San Bernardino terror attacks, will be in court today to face charges. Including conspiring to provide material support to terrorism, being the straw purchaser of those AR-15 teens and for immigration fraud. Fox's Will Carr says Marquez faces up to 25 years in prison and five coalition soldiers are killed and six wounded in a suicide bomb attack at the Bagram Air Base in Afghanistan. Fox News, we report, you decide.
is Dale Pazinski. I'm 19 years old, and this is how I live United. I've always been kind of a computer geek, and I found a way to use those skills to help the homeless in my community. For people facing hard times, computer skills and a basic resume are so important. It may seem like a small thing, but it makes a huge difference in people's lives. So with United Way, I created a program where I work with the homeless. Together, we go through their whole job history, write a resume, and then save it on their very own USB drive. We provide workbooks and training certificates. I even budgeted for cupcakes so we can celebrate as a class when one of our people gets a job. That's huge. When somebody says, hey man, that job that you helped me apply for, I got it. That's what Living United feels like to me. My name is Dale Pazinski. I help people achieve financial independence. So I don't just wear the shirt, I live it. Give, advocate, volunteer, Live United. Go to liveunited.org. Brought to you by United Way and the Ad Council. Are you wasting hundreds or thousands of dollars on termite retreat fees? If you're not with Turner Pest Control, you probably are. Turner Pest Control offers the industry's only termite and pest control package that never charges retreat fees, ever. You can get started today for only $99. This is a value of $500 or more. This includes treatments, installation of monitoring stations, quarterly pest control, and a lifetime guarantee, all for an unbelievable low $99. Even if you have another pest control provider, visit turnerpest.com to find out how you can avoid paying those high termite retreat fees. Hello, gorgeous. Hi, this is Becky at Hello Gorgeous Salon. Let's get rid of those sun damage ends and faded out color and get into something rich and vibrant. It's time to get that new look started. So call today and set up your appointment at Hello Gorgeous Salon, 351-5358. Hello Gorgeous is a certified Brazilian blowout salon. We can tame those locks, leaving your hair healthy and shiny with a Brazilian smoothing treatment. And whether you're going on a job interview or out on a date, your hands do a lot of talking. Manicures are a must. Hello Gorgeous is a full service salon, so let us help you make a great first impression. Call us today to set your appointment at Hello Gorgeous. Our number is 352-351-5358. Again, that's 352-351-5358. Hello Gorgeous is conveniently located in the heart of downtown Ocala, right next to the historic Marion Theater. And don't forget, we also do men and children's cuts too. Hello Gorgeous. Don't get caught without your daily source of senior deals. Pick up your copy of the Senior Voice newspaper. It's your source for schedule and events tailored to seniors with information you need, like a list of free events in the area. We even have Tom's Picks, a free referral for people who are looking for a company to do work for them. Tom's Picks will refer the company to you that fits your needs. And all we ask in return is that you tell them where you heard about them. For more information, call Tom's Picks, 352-804-1223. And pick up your copy of the Seniors Voice at most any business up and down the 200 corridor. Now read Ocala Downtown Newspaper Online. Hi, this is Brad. I want to take a moment to talk about a serious issue. In the next five years, the aviation industry is projected to have a shortage of commercial pilots. Now is the time to start training. Ocala Flying Club has started a scholarship for the youth of Marion County, ages 17 to 24. The club will donate up to $4,000 towards a pilot's license. This will help get the student on their way to obtain their commercial pilot license. If this sounds like something you would be interested in, or if you know someone that would be, please contact Ocala Aviation Services, 861-7484. When I started thinking about this year's Christmas greeting, I wanted to make it something meaningful. So here is my heartfelt wish for us all. Good health, prosperity, and the peace to be happy, whatever our circumstances. Remember the reason for the season. Merry Christmas. A very happy Christmas to everyone. W-O-C-A! All right, 25 minutes before 8 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in this uh, Monday morning. It, I, I believe it is the first day of winter. I, I, I'm not so sure. The winter solstice is today. Oh, okay. It's, it's just that. Oh, let, me, <laughs> let me look this up. Is that when the naked ladies dance around like the spring solstice? <laughs> I think so, yeah. <laughs> oh, cool. When oh, it's Florida. Come to Florida. Dance in front the of the window. the winter solstice 2015. Hold on. Okay. <laughs> Come by the window. Well, yeah, we got this big window out here. We Tuesday, can December twenty second. Tomorrow is the winter solstice. Oh, okay. You ladies have a whole day to plan. <laughs> the window will be open at. 7 all right. So let me let me before we do our our, our news and all that stuff. So so at, on at Robin's Church, which is Saint John Saint Lutheran. John's Lutheran Church. Yes. Uh, on beca- Lake Ware Avenue. Because you and I do music. Your mother was in one of the ladies who in charge of creating this wonderful event. 
The angel tree. The angel tree. And the angel tree, just to recap, the, I'm, I'm telling the story. I should let you tell the story. No, you go ahead. But you have a, a program that you you find children who are the children of incarcerated adults mm-hmm. in jail. These children won't be getting a Christmas unless somebody steps in and, and helps them out. And so the you ladies, and I think, no, there was men there too. So it was, yeah, you, yeah. The, the people fellas. from the church. They get the names. Who do you get the names from? How do you get the names? From the uh, uh, prison ministry, the people that go there to minister oh, okay. to the prisoners. They they have the parents that are incarcerated fill out a form and so with they, their children's name and ages. So uh, the reason I was there, because you and I do music, and your mom's friend asked us if we would just play Christmas songs yep. while, the, while they were there. Shelby, if you tell and, and I really didn't know what I was doing. I mean, I just knew where I was playing Christmas songs. But when I was witnessing, I, I realized this is a really special thing. So what you all do over at your church is you get a name from the tree. You just pick one at random? Right, right. And, and then anybody can pick one. Up. And on that note, somebody did the homework already. And on that note, you get the name of a child, mm-hmm. right? And right. that and what that child wants for Christmas? Right. You get the, the name of the child, the, se- the first name, the sex, the uh, uh, age of the child, and then what they want for Christmas and your little, the, little, and the little boy you got wanted shoes I know that yeah what shoes a, and, and socks and a pair of jeans and then I got him some a book and uh, uh, a cool thing you a uh, headlamp you put on your head you know so you can go under covers and read the book with and a couple of toys so he was set that's nice okay so yeah. that's what you got him and you gift wrapped it them oh yeah they're gift all gift wrapped, wrapped them whatever mm-hmm. the and then you put tenses. the sticker on there that they supply. So the, okay. there, there, there is no name of the parents or anything. It's just a number. So by the time we get it, we get a first name and, and a you know a control number on it. So nobody knows. Who so the then child they get is. the then they tell all the all the guardians of the kids because they have somebody watching out for them, right? Yes. And so the guardians are now aware. Come by the church on Saturday. We're going to have the party and give the gifts out. Right. And so, the children and the and the and the guardians first have to go into the church itself, where people worship. And there's a little lady there. It's not a service, but she she Elaine she, Lamp. she tells the story of uh, the Jesus being born story, the Bethlehem thing, you know. Mm-hmm. And then they then they get up from there and they walk to this room, this building behind the church. I guess the whole thing is the church, but this building on the campus. Yeah. And you called it the Grace Place Grace building, Place, yeah. Right? It's, okay. it's it's the cafeteria for the school that's there, and it's you know the meeting place and the stage. And that's where great. we were. That's where we mm-hmm. were playing music. So now the children and the adults that come in there, and there's tables filled with gift wrapped gifts. Mm-hmm. But before they get the gifts, they have to sit at two different tables. One, they're making snowmen out of construction paper or things, right. with cotton and things. Mm-hmm. And the other one, they were making cards for the soldiers. Yeah, Christmas cards for the soldiers. Christmas cards for the soldiers. They got to eat cookies. The, I don't, did they have milk? I don't know what they yep, gave. Yep, they had milk. They okay. had beverages. Right. Uh, sometimes they had pizza there, but yesterday it was cookies and Saturday. milk. And th- Saturday. Yeah. And then... They then the fun part. They go over and and uh, and they uh, get their gifts. And meanwhile, the whole time, Robert and I were playing Christmas songs, and it was a, a mix. We we did the the secular ones, you know, Frosty the Snowman, and the religious ones as well. Mm-hmm. And it occurred to me after I realized what I was a part of that this was such a special thing. And and um, and the, and the parent the the guardians of these children who do not have parents in their lives right now because they're in jail have this wonderful experience they're exposed to the 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 christian the heart of the christian story which is the christmas story and uh, you you just realize that this this was a really special maybe a life-changing thing for them yeah you you never know you never know certainly a great experience i could tell when some of them were walking in because to be honest i didn't know that these people did not go to your church until mm-hmm. afterwards, then I figured it out. But because I thought, boy, they look like they're a little bit like skittish, like it's a new place. Like they're walking, what are they? Like they were a little nervous. Yeah, right. But right. then they got there. Everybody <laughs> was open arms and welcoming them. And and uh, so anyway, kudos to you and your mom and uh, the ladies and, and the gentlemen who were at that event. I just yep. I just thought it was outstanding. And there's I thought Shelby it, and Carol Alberts and Ray and gosh, everybody's just Bill. <laughs> I just thought it deserved a, a public kind of an acknowledgement. So. Oh, yeah. Well, thank you so much because it's so wonderful. And the children, the smiles on their faces, and they just have a great time. It's just absolutely wonderful. They've been doing it for 20 years. The ladies have. It's a core of ladies that do wow. this. And wow. uh, it's just amazing. And uh, 
who knows? You know, some of those children, when they grow up, they'll be touched with it, or some of them might want to go to the church now or attend Sunday school, and it's really a wonderful thing. It's really, it was a really very, yeah. very sweet event. And, and to uh, have your parents, one or both, in jail, I mean, gosh, you know, those kids, you have to pour your heart out to them. You say prayers for them, too, and hopefully they get out of jail eventually. Yes. Uh, all right, today, if you don't want to go to jail. No. You better. You better register that drone. <laughs> if you own a drone from today, mm-hmm. from today, you must register it with the Federal Aviation Administration. The drone owner, whether it's a new purchase, like for Christmas, or a drone that's been flying for years, <laughs> will have to register a name, a physical address, and an email address. The registry, which will allow the FAA to track drones in instances of collisions or airspace violations, <laughs> also aims to reinforce the rules for flying. Yeah. <laughs> I've seen one drone so far. I, I, I wonder if I lived in a bigger city, would I see more drones? You think? I think so. How probably. high did they go? Could they go as high as like the tall buildings in New York? Could they go up to the top of the Ooh, World Trade yeah, Center? Yeah, because when, well, when when uh, my mom and I were in New York uh, uh, a year and a half ago, we were on top of the Empire State Building, and my mom's hanging over the side, and she's saying, "Look at that! Is that one of those things flying around?" And we were in the observation deck, and that was a drone. Hmm. TJ and Charity and I looked at it, and it was was one of those drones. So how high is the observation deck of the Empire State Building? <laughs> Gotta be pretty tall. I'm not really sure. Yeah, but all right. Next, next <laughs> thing here, the the movie Star Wars uh, debuted on Friday for the, for the masses, and apparently it did really, really, really well. I'll tell you about that in a second. But okay, what is one of the things they talk about? They talk about the dark side. Ooh. Well, the dark side of today mm-hmm. is tonight. Oh. <laughs> it is the okay. dark side of today is tonight. You can say that any day of the year. Right. But tonight is the longest dark side of them all. Oh, my gosh. Did you know that? The winter solstice tomorrow, but tonight is the longest night of the year. Oh, gosh. The solstice occurs at the same instance everywhere on Earth, according to (laughs) earthsky.org. It happens this evening at 11.48 p.m. So winter literally starts today, but the first full day of winter is tomorrow. Oh, cool. Winter starts at 11.48 p.m. tonight. Uh Uh-huh. The solstice marks the precise moment at which the northern hemisphere is tilted as far away from the sun as it will be all year. (laughs) Well, we got to have this camera pointed out there tonight at 11.48 and see if there's anybody dancing. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. It's the (laughs) astronomical beginning. I would care if they were dancing out there. It's the astronomical beginning of the winter season. Although meteorologists define the beginning of winter as December 1st. Really? What's the matter with them? (laughs) I know. December 1st. (laughs) Uh, Pope Francis gathered the Roman Curia, the cardinals, bishops, and priests who run the Holy See, S-E-E. I don't know what it is. (laughs) Okay, yes, the Holy See. To deliver his traditional Christmas greeting today. Mm Mm-hmm. Traditional Christmas greeting will be delivered today by the Pope. Usually, it's a jovial affair. He urged Vatican bureaucrats to show more honesty, humility, and sobriety as he issued a Christmas time catalog of virtues for his collaborators to follow after having exoriated them Gosh. last year for a host of sins. Is that the word? Exoriated? Exoriated. It's new to me, but now right. I'll be. We got more. We got more news. We'll be right back. <laughs> The weather is brought to you by MyFWC.com. Safe boating is no accident. It'll be warm today with times of clouds and sun. Watch out for an afternoon shower, though. The high 78 to 82. Mostly cloudy tonight, though, 65 to 69. For tomorrow and Wednesday, clouds and sunny breaks. And on the it'll be warm with a shower or two along the coast each day. High tomorrow, 80 to 84. And the high Wednesday, 82 to 86. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Joe Lundberg. One of the most common questions those nearing retirement are asking, 
will I outlive my money? Retirement questions like these and many more will be answered every Saturday morning at 9 a.m. on planning for a better and safer retirement with hosts Francois and Julian Cozanet. Francois and Julian will help you put your retirement puzzle together. Catch Planning for a Better and Safer Retirement Saturdays at 9 a.m. on Ocala's News Talk, The Source 96.3 FM and 1370 a.m. This is Hank Whittier from Vets Helping Vets. I want to wish everybody a Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays and have a safe and prosperous New Year. Hey, this is Carol Ann from In the Garden with Carol Ann. I want to wish everyone a very Merry Christmas and a Happy and Prosperous New Year. Merry Christmas. It's Kelly Hart, Executive Editor at Ocala Magazine, wishing you and your family a very Merry Christmas and a prosperous New Year from all of us at Ocala Magazine. Hi, this is Alex. And this is Jessica. And we just want to wish everybody out there a Merry Christmas. And a Happy New Year. Yeah, there's two people I love a lot. Uh, <laughs> my son and his wife. It's, uh, 13 minutes before 8 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in this Monday morning, the uh, Christmas week. Hope you're doing well. The cold weather, I guess, is history. I have no idea if it's coming back. <laughs> it won't be back this week, <laughs> according to the meteorologists. Uh, all right, let's see what else is in the news. Um, International Space Station astronauts will perform a spacewalk today to move a work platform stuck on rails outside the orbiting research complex. Oh, my. We take it for granted. This, these, oh, is this, they're going to go outside. It's still a dangerous mission. Oh, sure it is. We just we, we read that and go, oh, they're going to do a little spacewalk. Oh, it'll be no big deal. But it is a big deal. It is a big deal. Uh, NASA astronauts Scott Kelly and Tim Kopra will exit the space station for a spacewalk likely to last at least three hours. Wow. Copra recently arrived at the station with Great Britain's Tim Peake and Yuri Malenchenko of Russia. Well, you had those space stories a few weeks ago, and the one guy, while he was out there, had ammonia on a suit, and he couldn't come back in the space station until he right. fixed it. He had to so evaporate. it's dangerous. Yeah, it's, it's dangerous he out there. He had to evaporate in the sun. You just don't go floating around like lost in space or something. It's not like the movies. It's real life. It's cool. Yeah, really. I love it. Uh, two of the world soccer's most powerful men were banned from the sport for eight years. <laughs> <laughs> to th- today, in an ongoing ethics scandal, eight years. Wow. Suspended FIFA president Sepp Blatter. Sounds like a disease. It does. <laughs> And, FIFA Seth Blatter. And, and the men who, who the man who was once slated to succeed him, Michelle Platini, were punished by FIFA's ethics court in relation to an investigation of a two million dollar payment that Blatter approved for Platini without telling his executive committee colleagues. Blatter, who was seventy nine, and Platini, who was sixty, have already promised to appeal. Oh, Wait a minute. Oh, so they're upper echelon. They're not players. Yeah, they're the president. I thought they were the players, but they're the right. president and the successor. Mm. Yeah, they figured they're going to extort, you know, they're they're going to embezzle money, and why not? You know, 179, 160, so they figure, whoa, we're going to Tahiti. Hey, what do they care? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, at the 2015 Miss Universe pageant, which aired live last night, host Steve Harvey announced that Miss Columbia had won. Her name is... A Ariadna Gutierrez. Ariadna Gutierrez. She's a really pretty lady, by the way. But (laughs) right after she took her first walk as Miss Universe, Mm -hmm. Steve Harvey came out. (laughs) You had to laugh. Poor guy. I felt so bad. I really felt so bad for him. He's not hosting it anymore. I like this guy so much. I just felt so bad for him. He, He had misread the card. She. Miss Philippines was actually the winner. Miss Philippines' name is Pia Alonso Wurzbach. <laughs> Guterres was the runner-up. There was booing. Gosh. There was chaos in the crowd. I bet there was. Uh, eventually, Paul Harvey addressed the crowd. He, uh, Paul Harvey. Steve Harvey, I mean. <laughs> Paul Harvey. Is he his son? <laughs> 
<laughs> Have you seen Steve Harvey? <laughs> I can't remember. Do you know what, he what race like. he is? <laughs> okay. Do you know Paul Harvey was a white guy? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can't remember. <laughs> it could be. Familiar. It could be. I know it could be. It's possible. <laughs> just doesn't seem likely. <laughs> anyway, Steve Harvey said, listen, folks, let me just take care of it. I felt so bad for him. He said, this is exactly what's on the card. I will take responsibility for this. It was my mistake. It was on the card. Horrible mistake. Yeah. But I can show it to you right here. And he holds it up, <laughs> but not long enough for the camera to zoom in on. But the cameraman tried to. Uh-huh. He says, it was my mistake. Still a great night. Yeah, it was. <laughs> right? Yeah, Still a great night. beautiful <laughs> women. Please don't hold it against the ladies, he said. We feel so badly, but it's still a great night. And with that... Steve Harvey walked off the stage and last year's Miss Universe winner Paulina Vega also from Columbia by the way mm -hmm. was in the uncomfortable position of taking the crown off of Miss Columbia's head oh I bet that Miss Columbia was crying and putting it on Miss Philippine's head uh -huh. <laughs> uh, Steve Harvey was <laughs> on Twitter last night just apologizing so is Donald Trump associated with Miss Universe anymore? Is he? No, nah, I think I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, but gee, <laughs> well, Steve, Har Steve Harvey's not coming back. He's not going to any. He's not going to be invited he to any award shows. Want these I don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> do this to me. <laughs> you, know, you know, but I'm going to be. I'm going to tell you something. Here's the truth. You and I do the award ceremony with the the, the student the media school festival school board, right? Yeah, the public schools. Okay. Well, I'm confused, too. You you go up there sometimes, and you have a piece of paper, and you open it up, and you're announcing to the students who won what. Yes. Right? And it is easy to say the winner is. Mm-hmm. Instead of saying, oh, the first runner-up is. Yeah. <laughs> because you open it up, and there's the name. Yes. And, 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 and just as Steve Harvey said, it is written the way it is, so it is mm -hmm. written correctly, but sometimes... At the moment, you're in front of a you know a crowd. Mm -hmm. I could see it. I could see it. I could, I I even got it with um, John Travolta when he mispronounced or well, not mispronounced. He said the wrong name. Remember? Yeah, yeah, he did. He did. And, and, and <laughs> I felt bad for him too because I because we've been in that circumstance where you have a teleprompter helping you out or, right. or a piece of paper that's supposed to be read. And, mm -hmm. Well, Kevin Christian does a great job with the Student Media Festival. He makes sure in big letters, third place, oh, I second know. place, no, one, they, first place. My, He's great. Ex, well, I'm just trying to relate yeah. to Steve Harvey's position. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> they, they do a great job, and I'm mm -hmm. sure they did a great job over here. He says they do. They did. Right. I printed up a couple of stories that are in the printer. Oh, you got them? Thank you. You're welcome. All right, this is the Star Wars story. Uh, Star Wars, The Force Awakens brought in the galactic... No, there's nothing else. Okay. Brought in the galactic $238 million over the weekend. $238 million. How much did you make? <laughs> <laughs> Making it the biggest North American debut of all time, according to studio estimates yesterday. Yeah, my nephew so, went with nine of his friends. They all went. They bought their tickets like five weeks ago online, and they all went. So whoever was the naysayer that said it's not going to beat, it's not going to be Titanic, which I think held the record, right? Right, right. Oh no, Jurassic World had the record. Uh, the Walt Disney Company earnings destroy the previous opening record set by Universal's Jurassic World, which drew two hundred eight point eight million dollars this summer. Mm-hmm. Internationally, the film brought in $279 million, bringing its global gross to $517 million, second only to Jurassic World's global bow of, of $525 million. Mm -hmm. This is it's outstanding. But, I can't uh, wait to see it. but the, uh, the Jurassic World movie opened up in China, but Star Wars didn't open in China this weekend. It won't open there till January 9th. Mm hmm. This is just the latest in the laundry list of records set by J.J. Abrams' film, the seventh in the franchise, which had analysts anticipating a debut anywhere from $150 million to $300 million. They just don't give the Star Wars fans credits. Those guys, are, those analysts are probably old and they don't care. They're not in touch with reality. <laughs> the Force Awakens drew n enormous pre-sales. The film was kept under lockdown from the press and critics until mere days before it was released to the public. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. My nephew and his friend Eric said they're wonderful. Everybody's saying it's good stuff, right? 
Yes, yes, it was absolutely outstanding. All right. They all had a good time. And every, everybody's posting on Facebook, don't tell me what happened in Star Wars until I see it. Well, it's too late. Well, ha- No, nobody's telling what's happening. <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> uh, but this is a sad story. J- uh, Jimmy Carter's grandson died. He was only 28 years old. Yeah, that was so sad. Former President Jimmy Carter's 28-year-old grandson named Jeremy died. Um, Carter told a church gathering on Sunday, according to the Atlanta Journal-Constitution, the newspaper said Carter who two weeks ago said he is now cancer-free, yes. appeared at the Maranatha Baptist Church to teach his regular Sunday school class and told church members that his grandson had died a few hours earlier. The cause of death was unclear. Wow. The 91-year-old former president told the church Jeremy Carter had felt unwell on Saturday and that his mother discovered his heart had stopped after he went to take a nap at his family's home in Peachtree City, Georgia. Mm. Officials with the Carter Center, a nonprofit founded by the former president to promote peace and health, did not immediately respond to a request for a comment. Yeah, that's uh, sad story. so sad. I know how that feels. It's so sad. Uh, I guess this will be the last one. The distinction between gender stereotyping Okay. And sexual orientation discrimination is illusory and artificial. Uh, okay, new that, word. That according to Judge Dean Pregerson in a lawsuit against Pepperdine University. The ruling is the latest move in a larger ongoing effort to protect LGBT people from discrimination under existing civil rights laws. He basically has ruled that sexual orientation discrimination is sex discrimination. The federal ban on sex discrimination in education includes a ban on sexual orientation discrimination. A federal judge in California ruled, just kind of repeating it in different words, U.S. District Court Judge Dean Pregerson's ruling appears to be the first time a federal judge has made this ruling as it pertains to Title IX of the Education Amendments of 1972, the federal ban on sex discrimination in education. Without much fanfare, advocates and federal officials in recent years with support from some courts have undertaken a significant effort to expand the reach of existing federal anti-discrimination laws, primarily Title VII of the Civil Rights Act of 1964 and Title IX to cover lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender people from discrimination. Mm -hmm. The California case was brought by two women who alleged that Pepperdine universities discriminated against and harassed them because of their perceived sexual orientation. Gosh. I don't no. know, I don't know anymore. When they say somebody's a woman, does that mean they believe they are or does that mean they physically are? I I don't know what it means anymore. Yeah, no. There's a line there now. There's a line whether you believe it or whether you physically are. There's a line. So, so I, the way I look at it is you shouldn't discriminate against anybody for any reason at all. Right. But. <laughs> but here's exactly. The, here, but here's the big, the big but. <laughs> In the restroom. <laughs> <laughs> Am I old-fashioned on this one? In the restroom. And, and, and I don't know. I mean. <laughs> I guess just in the rest, in the showers, like like in, in like let's say in in uh, where do you shower publicly? High like, school gym class. High school gym class, yeah. Yep. Don't tell me you can't say he thinks he's a woman. He should be allowed in there. That doesn't make any sense to me. No, uh, uh-uh. uh, nope. Or oh. gender neutral restrooms. No thanks. Well, who am I to Women, say? men. If you got the anatomy, you use that restroom. <sighs> All right, we'll be right back. Broadcasting from the Paddock Mall Studios, this is WOCA, Ocala, Gainesville, The Villages, 1370 AM, 963 FM, The Source. Fox News Radio, I'm Pat O'Neill. A driver plowing into a crowd on the Las Vegas Strip last night, killing one and injuring 36, Police Lieutenant Peter Bovelli. We have our um, fatal detail here. We have our homicide detail here. We also have our counterterrorism here to ensure that we have covered all aspects of this investigation. Police say the woman driver in her 20s had a kid in her car. She was arrested at a hotel. President Obama says while ISIS is a threat, we should not let fear disrupt our daily lives. All you've been hearing about is... Uh, these guys with masks or black flags who were potentially 
coming to get you. The president says Republican candidates are taking advantage of that fear. He says Americans should stay vigilant, but also keep ISIS in perspective. President Obama speaking with NPR News. Fox Radio Steve Dowler. New Hampshire officials are taking no chances closing all schools today after threats toward two schools in Nashua. Fox News, we report, you decide. I'm in almost every school bus and classroom. I go to school with your children. We say the Pledge of Allegiance together. You see me around the neighborhood and you tell me that I'm a pretty good kid. Well, I'm one out of every five children in America and I'm struggling with hunger. This problem is closer than you think. My teacher tells me we grow up to be whatever we want. I want to grow up to be someone who doesn't go to bed hungry. There's enough food in this country to feed everybody. Please visit feedingamerica.org today and find your local food bank for ways to help. Every dollar you provide eight meals for kids like me, quietly struggling with hunger. Together, we are Feeding America. Brought to you by Feeding America and the Ad Council. Hi, this is JP from Penn Flooring here in Ocala. I would like to invite you to come in and visit our spacious showroom where we have solutions for every style and budget. From wall-to-wall carpet to hardwood floors and tiles, we have an unsurpassed selection of flooring. At Penn Flooring, we've provided quality customer service with a family touch for over 25 years. Visit our website at penflooring.com or come by our showroom, 1201 Southwest 17th Street, just over the bridge. Penn Flooring, quality customer service with a family touch. This is a public notice. Local residents can now save thousands of dollars on their next car, truck, or SUV. It's not a tent sale. Because no tent is big enough to hold this many cars. It's OcalaForSale.com. Say goodbye to sticker shock. OcalaForSale.com has thousands of vehicles with no stickers at all. But hurry, don't walk, don't run. Just sit down and log on to OcalaForSale.com. Prices and inventory change daily. Offer does not include dealer upcharge. Undercutting less proofing factory surcharge or delivery fee. See website for details. Gene Powell, Pasture Mowing. Gene and Debbie would like to thank you for another successful year of business. We also want to wish everybody a safe, healthy, and prosperous 2016. We are ready to be of service with our pasture mowing. 352-629-2440. Locally owned and operated, experienced and reliable, commercial and residential, licensed and insured. Powell Jean, G-E-N-E at yahoo.com. 352-629-2440. Gene Powell, Pasture Mowing. 352-629-2440. On this episode,